Shalom, Chavrin. My name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It's a world of Ain Shalom, friends. And uh, as I've been shared with by a friend that I have in Israel that just wrote me recently, me and a few other people that he actually included in on this, uh, was saying in his letter to the different people that he wrote this to that he believes from inside information that he has, uh, people, as he said, is in the know, that Israel is about to go to war. This time, though, he's talking about Hezbollah, uh, Syria, Iran, and all these nations being taken out pretty much at one time. Well, that's kind of interesting because the Times.co.uk was reporting that the pummel the bases missed the men, Israel's invisible war in Syria, and how that uh, General uh, Eshkenot, Gadi Eshkenot, that is, talks about how that since 2017, Israel's been fighting a secret war inside of Syria, targeting Iran uh, as they go through this war. And as I looked at this, and of course with the uh, idea that we're about to be speaking in Portland, Oregon, uh, this coming weekend, along with uh, uh, Ellie Marzulli and my wife, and I figured I would share some insights with you just how serious the situation is on a global scale. And how that even in my own mind, uh, things have kind of changed over time. You know, you have to understand, myself, I come, of course, as a, a believer in Yeshua at a very early age. But nonetheless, I've been involved in the Chabad organization for many, many years. Uh, no longer now, no longer an active member, I should say. But uh, I was amongst the Orthodox uh, rabbis because my desire was always to, to win my people to Yeshua. But I was very quiet about things. I waited for the Lord to lead me. And, and of course, we've had some success in winning uh, uh, Jews to Yeshua as time has gone on. But at the same time, I had no idea that I would end up being a part of an organization that has worked for global ties, um, both in the political circle and private sector, as well as working very close with the Vatican and actually marrying the two religions together as part of a new world order. And some of the things I'm going to talk to you about today, you might interpret as Russian collusion, uh, President Trump, President uh, Vladimir Putin, etc. But I don't want you to get confused because although I may focus on some of these issues, I realize too that the Clintons were involved with the uh, Russian uh, president, President Putin as well. But there's a lot of things going on in the background, a lot of things that are being, that I'm working on in an investigative journalist report right now with very private sources uh, that will eventually come out that will show you a very intricate web that is being built by all these different groups in the background. And at the end of the day, it's a new world order. And even though I thought for quite some time that maybe President Putin was trying to do the right thing in the Middle East there and helping President Bashar al-Assad and the Syrian people from being totally annihilated, I'm convinced more and more that he has actually also worked as far as in facilitating the bringing down of all these nations in the Middle East for a new world order. That he's part of the plan. After all, some of you that are out there listening, you would probably say, no, he's the Gog of Magog and eventually Russia is going to turn on Israel. No, he's not. Now, Turkey may do that, but then again, all that will be part of the plan. After all, Netanyahu, believed by many of my Israeli uh, friends that are believers in Yeshua, expect that he will be the very man that leads Israel to the war with Iran, which will cause the deaths of more than a million Jews at the end of this war. I can believe that to be so. And don't worry, America will be the next target. After all, everybody thinks that Russia is going to take out Israel. Maybe they'll let Russia play the dirty part just a little bit so that the United States can go to war with Russia, and then they'll use Russia and China to crush America. And I know we do have a massive military, but who's going to come to our aid when these nuclear bombs begin to fly through the air? I can't really say, but I'm going to show you some things tonight that might disturb you. Some things that I will share in the Portland conference, but a little bit more in detail. I want to give you a little bit of background, though, to start with. You know, the Nostra Aetate deal that was signed back in 2015 between the Vatican and Israel was a major move. In fact, before they even signed it, I was not as much privy about what was going on. All I knew is that the Vatican was trying to make connections and a covenant with Israel that I felt was very dangerous for the Jewish people. 
I was taken to the airways and only had about 20,000 subscribers warning my Jewish brothers and sisters the dangers of making a covenant with Rome that you will be fulfilling prophecy, setting the stage for Rome once again to take over Israel and be under the thumb of the Vatican. But I totally forgot about the fact that it wasn't just Rome that was running Israel 2,000 years ago, but it was also the Pharisees and Sadducees and, of course, the Sanhedrin Council. They worked together. In fact, both of them together are the ones that put Yeshua to the cross and put him to death. Speaking about putting Yeshua to the cross, that just kind of reminds me of another thing, because so many people are so busy thinking that Netanyahu is some kind of savior for Israel and that he's truly the man of God to do a great thing for the Jewish people and have no idea that he has supported the most liberal abortion law ever in the state of Israel, makes it a free-for-all a free, a free -for -all for the gay community to parade through the streets of Jerusalem, and now, right in Haifa, there in the museum there, what do they have going on? The Mac Jesus Sculpture. Supports the BDS wants controversial statue removed from the Haifa Museum. Yeah, can you believe it? And who are the only people that actually came as a vocal opponent about something that was so sacrilegious to the Jew to the Christian people? Well, it happened to be the Palestinians. The Palestinian Christians actually stood for Christ and said this was sacrilegious for them to even do such an evil thing. And yet We'll spend millions of dollars supporting a government rather than standing with the believers of Israel, both Jews and Palestinians alike. So we got to wake up to what we really stand for. I mean, stand, if you're a believer in Yeshua, why don't you stand for Christ? All right? Now, that's just a side note. But after all, as I said, the Vatican was working on this deal. Well, I had a friend of mine that was a spokesperson for the United Nations. They caught wind to me making it public about this deal between the Vatican and Israel, and they actually flew to where I lived in Fort Myers, Florida, came to my home and warned me not to ever speak again against the Vatican. Well, oddly enough, this person was an evangelical, but like myself, also a Jew, and a member of what? the Chabad Organization of Jews. Not only a member of the Chabad Organization of Jews, but was also a former Roman Catholic. Wow, what do you know? Very interesting connection. Now at the time I was being warned that I was causing a major problem and that the Catholic Church in Israel was about to sign a historic agreement, but I was causing problems because certain Orthodox Jews in Israel listening to my channel didn't want anything to do with this deal. I didn't even realize at the time it was the Nostri Aetate. But that's exactly what it was. And of course, I was already blasting the evangelical covenant that was going on between the Vatican and the evangelicals, and you know, Kenneth Copeland, uh, and how they had their big meeting and they sent the Vatican envoy, uh, Pope Francis sent his own Vatican envoy, uh, Tony Palmer, to the Kenneth Copeland event, uh, the Big Fish Conference, as Tony called it, to bring them into the fold. That was right before, po that was in 2013, and of course right before Pope Francis would go and hold his communion service in the uh, upper room right above King David's tomb. They're clarifying fulfilling biblical prophecy of Obadiah where it says that they would drink upon God's holy mountain. Yeah, that was the Catholic Church fulfilling prophecy. And of course, the signing of the Nostri Aetate a year later galvanized that relationship. Now, some would say that's the one world religion. But in reality, the one world religion between the Vatican and of course the Jewish people galvanize also the world's governments. Because you have to understand, all world leaders go to the Pope of Rome and bow and kiss his feet. Kind of like what happens in amongst the Chabad movement, which the Chabad movement is bringing most of Judaism under their own wing because the Chabad movement is a major intricate part of Jewish movement that is dominating the entire globe. Now you have to understand, 
many people that are members of the Chabad every day, Orthodox Jews, they have no idea, just like most Catholics have no idea, that the Catholic Church dominates global politics and global uh, events around the world. Same thing goes along with the Chabad organization. Most Jews that are part of a Chabad synagogue or whatever may never have any clue just how deep those connections go. But I can tell you from personal experience, being a member of the Chabad organization myself and being a business owner for many, many years, actually more than 20 years I was a business owner, how close of a network we have as family. Every Jew there was did business with me because the family sticks together. If you have need of money for your business, not a problem. The Jewish family will work together. They'll give you the money you have need of with very little ever expected in return other than paying your debt. Once so I felt in my heart to really reach out to my people, though, I had to close my business. I had to satisfy the debt that had been given to, to me by very wealthy Chabad Jews that I knew as well. Now, the debt wasn't severe. I'd only had to buy a few different asset vehicles that were part of the business that I was working with. But in order to satisfy that debt, though, even my wife had to give up her piano, a piano she'd worked very hard for to be able to pay for. It took that in order to satisfy the debt because we wanted to be, as Yeshua said, oh, no man, nothing. So we've moved on, and that's kind of give you a little bit of a background of how that works now. But all the Jews, even the Jewish Congress, they come to the Orthodox, like you have here. This is back from 1991, the video that you see on your screen here, Jewish Congress, Jewish Unity. Uh, this is, I, I think this Rabbi Fisk is on here, uh, who, who's the guy in the uh, light-colored jacket with the little cap. But he's coming to Menachem uh, 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 Schneer, Schneerson, who was what most Orthodox Jews believe to be the, uh, to actually to be the Messiah. He died in 1994, though he never claimed it himself. He's still revered as if he were a messiah. But in this case here, Rabbi Fishkin comes there and he's seeking a blessing from Rabbi uh, Schneerson. And of course, he is a member of the Jewish Congress. I only bring this up to show the unity that the Chabad organization does, because the Chabad organization controls globally practically every nation they have the ties with. President Trump, President Putin, China, it doesn't matter what country it is, practically in every nation, the Chabad organization and rabbis have a very strong power structure. And of course, the most wealthiest businessmen in the world are connected to the Chabad organization, just like it is with Lev Levayev. Lev Levayev, he's also very close to President Trump. He's very close to President Putin. He is a multi-millionaire, billionaire, in fact, in the diamond trade industry. Now, there's a lot of things that I know that has not even been brought to the public's attention. But, oh, by the way, <laughs> speaking of that, uh, I forgot I had this up here, but let me just hit this real quick as well. Because as we see these issues that are going on, and like I said, you know, my desire is to win my own people to Christ. But so many of my brothers and sisters are so supportive of the secular Israeli government that we have, and you forget totally that the secular government doesn't come to take a stand for those values that you have as a true believer. In fact, Prime Minister Netanyahu, under his own administration, is the one that passed the most liberal abortion law in the history of the state of Israel, allowing abortions all the way up to the nine-month a pregnancy. That's a, to me, that's equivalent to murder. Not to mention the fact that the the opening up the Jerusalem doors to the gay parades and the gay people. I mean, if that's their lifestyle, that's that's their business, not mine. But when it comes to supposed to be the most holiest city on the planet, and you just open it up and you say. We are tolerant. We don't do like Iran does. We allow the gay parades in our city. And Prime Minister Netanyahu has been doing it for years. Well, I certainly don't support violence against any group of people, regardless of what they believe. 
but there's no way that I could condone something like that. And then the latest issue, they took Ronald McDonald in Haifa and put him on a cross that's considered to be an artwork and have this in a museum in Haifa. Why wasn't Prime Minister Netanyahu down there telling the museum, this has got to go? We have believers in Yeshua. We need to have respect to the way they believe. We don't, it doesn't mean that they, as Jews, they have to believe the way we believe, but at least have some respect. But no, you know, the only people that came to the defense of, of Yeshua and that this was sacrilegious, Palestinian Christians. And of course, they got tear gas fired upon them for protesting this exhibit inside of uh, a museum there. But no, unfortunately, many evangelicals, instead of standing with the believers of Yeshua in the state of Israel, which includes both Jewish believers and Palestinian believers, no, we stand with a secular government that wants more bombs and wants a bigger aid package uh, to be able to blow up more of the Middle East. You know, I actually have posted on uh, on our Facebook page, where is Israeli News Live Facebook page, I'd made a post in there. I made a suggestion. I said, look, as Israelis, we believe, as a Jewish people, truly that God is with us, then God will protect us. If the United States is in such danger from our southern border, is so many people are making the case that we need to have a wall on our southern border. Now, I think they're going to put the wall up to keep us in, ultimately. But even so, nonetheless, I won't fight the argument. I, you know, I think every country should have fence to, 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 as far as separating their border. Now, whether or not you put it 10 foot in the ground and 30 feet and up in the air, I don't think that really makes any difference because everybody that they're going to smuggle and smuggle drugs in, etc., they either do it by plane, boat, or they dig a tunnel underneath your, uh, your border and they come up in somebody's house where you have no idea that's what they're doing until you can finally catch them later on down the road. All right? So, yeah, and of course they might want to put the fence up to stop the illegal flow of drugs in because the government has their own force, their, their own source of drugs coming in, and that, of course, cuts out the politicians and all the others that get their cut from the drug trade. Yeah, I know so. Don't play games. I know so. All right? But my thought is if you want to be able to fund this wall, we signed a package with Israel for $38 billion for defense to buy more bombs and planes and bombs and planes and bombs and planes to blow up all of our neighbors that are really not a threat to them. I think our Israeli brothers and sisters really know that if America is under this much of a threat at our southern border, that they would be willing to take and say to America, look, you need protection as well. Take $8 billion of that $38 billion package over the next 10 years, apply that to your border fence, and then we can also take from our Pentagon budget, seeing as we have the biggest budget on the planet, and take maybe $8, $10 billion from our, from our military spending budget. I'm not talking about the raises for the military, but we got a lot of other wasted money that we really don't need, and put that to building a border fence. And before you know it, you'll have a border fence with no problem, and Trump can be all happy and fuzzy inside. But that's not the reality, friends. You know what the reality is? All these different world leaders are working behind the scenes to bring about a new world order. And of course, these religious groups is part of it. By the way, I thought it was interesting, Treasury Secretary Stephen uh, Munchen to brief lawmakers on Thursday about easing sanctions on companies linked to Putin friend. I know a lot of those links, and I know a lot of their companies and their LLPs and their LLCs. Uh, some of the information has been shared with me recently that would probably make every investigative journalist on the planet jealous to know just how deep it goes with the money laundering, the drugs that come in, and of course, the diamonds that are being used to launder money and the real estate empires that are being used to launder money and all kinds of crazy nonsense. You know what troubles me? Look at here, as they say here in this article. So the Treasury Secretary, Stephen Munchen, he's gonna lift some of these uh, sanctions, and of course, it's going to include um, one of Russia's oligarchs, Oleg Deripaska, a Russian billionaire with ties to Vladimir Putin, and he's also got ties, by the way, to Paul Manafort. You know, I just was sitting here, and I'll share some, some of this information here with you. Paul Manafort 
Boy, this is really a big guy here. All right. I'm sitting here working on this information that's been shared with me recently about the different companies that uh, are linked, even back to President Trump, uh, how they are working all these out. But Paul Manafort, along with Rick Gates and Rick Davis, they were involved in an acquisition of a company, uh, Parises, that bought out a telecommunications company in Ukraine back in 2007. Now, one of the Russian oligarchs who was a close friend of Putin's, he's the one that actually financed the first $19 million to be able to buy this company. But then I found out also that Paul Manafort, who I also knew uh, had, a, had a stake in Monhold AG uh, LLP, uh, that, that this company here was involved uh, in Ukraine and the agricultural minister uh, and, and dealing with some deals there with uh, the Shelley's companies, uh, etc. And of course, when I get into all this, let me let me just make it simple and everything. Paul Manafort and these guys that he knew, they had acquired using a Cayman Islands company, Par Parises, I think is how you say the name. It's a lot longer than that. But anyway, just to make it short there. They, had, they acquired this television company out of Ukraine. And it was used to actually... To, they used it for propaganda to control not only who would get into power, which include uh, Yanukovych at that time, uh, but also it would be used to, to help to stimulate the Maidan coup later down the road. The odd thing is, is Trump and Putin both had connections to all these men that were involved in these companies. And of course, there's a lot more other companies that, you know, just hundreds of these LLCs and LLPs that were put together for that very purpose. Uh, as well... I discovered one thing about Yanukovych that I did not know at the time, and that was that Yanukovych was put into power with the help of the United States and with Russia in order to skim off millions and millions of dollars from the Ukrainian government and to move that money into other accounts, including wealthy Russians, wealthy Americans, wealthy British, etc. Really the point in all this is, what's really going on? When they talk about the collusion between Donald Trump and... Uh, uh, and President Putin, yes, there is a connection. And it gets even deeper. And unfortunately, I've been given some information that definitely connects the two together. But, you know what? If it, was to, if it would have been for a situation where we could just avert a nuclear war or World War III, you know, as I said in the very beginning, so what if they colluded together? But what I'm discovering is just like the connection with Putin and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and all the other issues that go on with the Democrats, they're all guilty. And they're all working for one major goal, and that is a new world order. The only difference is, is they each want their share of the pie. And even though I thought at one time, like I said, that Putin might have been a pretty good guy, he's also working for the same thing. And in reality, when it comes to the Maidan coup in Ukraine, I can't help but think now that Putin knew just as much as the United States did, which it wasn't uh, President Trump, as President Obama, and they both were involved in it. Now, maybe it got out of hand. Maybe the CIA wanted to take control of the country and Putin and his friends wanted control of the country. And of course, they ended up with the coup because it didn't go as planned. And so the United States is trying to take it. Russia is trying to take it. And now they're all fighting over all the monies. Well, that's only part of the problem. But the other issue is, is just like it says here, the odd Chabad connection between Putin and Trump. And of course, as I said, the Chabad organization has many oligarchs in Russia that are part of it. And it also has many in the up, uh, let me put it like this, in the upper part of the Chabad movement, many of them that are involved there are involved there for far more sinister purposes. Like Lev Levayev, the multi-billionaire who gives millions of dollars to the Chabad movement. Now, there are many Jews, too, that are part of the Chabad movement that love, the, love God with all their heart, and they're there for what they believe to be a greater purpose. But I'm watching a new world order come out of this. And unfortunately for my Jewish brothers and for the Christian friends and brothers and sisters that I have as well, I'm trying to warn them, you are in a very dangerous mix, and you have no idea just how dangerous this mix really is. Now, I'll share some more things with you here. Let's see what I can do here. Ah, 
that's not the one I want to go with. Let me see. Go back up over here to the news here. Okay. Oh, they got this other issue. Fixated on collusion. Democrats seeking again to subpoena uh, uh, interpreter of President Putin Trump meeting. This is all a charade, friends. Every bit of this is just a charade. But here's the one thing that gets me. All right. This article came out. China poised to overtake U.S. economy in 2020. And as I mentioned to you the other day, Israel and China and their connections are at a monstrosity. Israel began moving all of America's companies over and the wealthy Jews of America began to move their companies into China back in the 80s and 90s. They knew that it's going to be a new global world, new world order. They knew that they're going to take down the United States eventually, right? Now, the other thing too, this was this is an older article uh, back in September, but I wanted to bring this up as well. Russia's chief rabbi reportedly paid secret visit to Iran on a trip organized by Putin. And Iran didn't like this very well, but Putin insists that he be allowed to go.